Welcome to Monetize the Mic. I'm Jessica Rhodes. And I'm Margie Feltune. And we are the co-owners of the award-winning multi-seven-figure podcast booking agency, Interview Connections. This is the show to teach you how to transform your business and life with the power of visibility and strategy. Let's get started. On today's episode, we're going to reveal to you why you are so tired, burnt out, and run down. Yes. So, and this is true, especially if you're someone who's like, I don't work 80 hour weeks or anything. Like I have like a decent schedule. I'm an entrepreneur. I get to take vacations. It's not the amount you're working. It's not even the amount of work. It's just exhaustion. And if you like me a couple of years ago are Googling symptoms of Lyme disease and how do I know if I have lead poisoning? I remember that. (laughs) Yeah. Then this is for you. So there's, there's seasons and this isn't just for entrepreneurs, for everybody. There's definitely seasons energetically, both internal life seasons and also the actual seasons. If you live in an area like we do in New England, there are seasons and you are more tired in the winter and you, then you get energy in the spring. And it's just, we're all, all the animals, we're all on the same kind of, kind of cycle. But one thing I realized um, about exhaustion and now every time someone else is like, I don't know why I'm so tired. This is like the first thing I ask them because this was such a breakthrough for me. If you're feeling really tired, obviously rule out a medical condition. Um, but if there's no medical reason, look at the conversations that you are putting off having specifically hard conversations things that you know you should say that you're thinking about a lot, but you are not authentically telling the person who should be told about this. And one thing I'm really passionate about is for the CEO, a big part of the role of CEO is having hard conversations. If you're the CEO of your company, you should think of yourself as (laughs) being the head of hard conversations. And if you haven't had a hard conversation in a while as CEO, you're probably putting something off and it may be draining your energy and making you feel tired. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it was so amazing. Cause I remember that a couple of years ago when you were like, I'm so tired, what's wrong with me? And they're Googling symptoms. And, you know, again, this isn't an episode about like physical health necessarily. We're not here to tell you like, eat this and, and exercise, like do all of the, the, go through the normal checklist of how to keep yourself feeling good. But this is so true. I loved when Marky had this breakthrough, um, because then we all get to learn from it. Cause you really can see when you're not saying something like, and maybe you're not even thinking about it. Like, Oh, this is a conversation I need to have. But if you're just like, if you're always annoyed at someone for something, but you never say it, that's probably a conversation you need to have. Yes. And a lot of the times these big energy sucks are masked by things that seem too small to bring up. So if you're like, this bothers me all the time, but it feels so minor and petty, I feel like an idiot bringing it up. That's the thing. Unless there's something big, like if you know, there's something big that you've been putting off telling someone that's why you're so tired. But if there's no big thing like that, at least consciously, it's probably something that looks small on the surface, but is actually big for you. And you might be putting off talking about it because you're like, well, this is embarrassingly small and dumb. So I don't want to bring it up, but if it keeps coming up for you, if you keep thinking about it, you're burning energy, you're leaking energy. That's going to cause you to be more tired and less effective in what you're doing. Yeah. The other side of this is being like honest and authentic. Like when people ask you questions, so I'm speaking to the people pleasers. When someone (laughs) asks you, like, how's it going? And you're not sure. Don't just be like, it's going great. (laughs) If it's not be honest, be honest, because that's, that's played out for me a lot is like not being honest because like, I want to have it all 
Like I'm a Capricorn. I work really hard. I want to have it all together. I don't want people to, to worry. So I'm like, it's going great. Got it under control. But then if I don't, then I'm like, like drowning, trying to figure it out and just be like, everything's good. So that can also be a huge energy suck is if it's not even like, I mean, yeah, initiating the conversation and being honest, but when someone asks you directly, don't lie, like be honest about how you're feeling so they can help you. Yeah. And this is something we've talked about with our whole team. And it's kind of this idea of toxic positivity because positivity is great, right? Like having a great company culture of people who are solution oriented is really important. And also when we aren't honest with our coaches and our teams and ourselves about things that are obstacles, whether it's an emotional obstacle or a physical obstacle, if we don't bring those problems to the surface, they can never be solved. So when we bury stuff, when we don't talk to people about what's going on, we rob ourselves of our ability and their ability to work together to solve these problems. And they usually end up being a lot more solvable than they felt in our head. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, I mean, this could all be boiled down to the cliche saying of like, be authentic, like be your authentic self. But we wanted to definitely do this episode and really share all of this because there's a lot of different sides to it. There's a lot underneath, like why people are not speaking up and like being honest and why are you resisting the difficult conversations? Like, what are you afraid is going to happen? Really explore that. Um, because yeah, on the other side is a lot more energy. And the other thing I wanted to say on this topic is also look inside your personal life. Like I realized if I am, and I think this will resonate too, for people, you know, who are married with kids, like I, I find myself being more drained of energy. If I'm not sharing about what's going on in my day to day, like what's happening at work and things like that. Like if I am starting to like feel like, like contract and just like not share like the minutia of the day, I'll start to feel more tired. But when I'm more like expressed and just sharing like little details with my husband and just talking more, I like find that I have more energy and I'm not like crawling into bed at eight o'clock, just wanting to watch TV. Like I can actually be up and like have conversations. So it really does have an impact on all areas of your life. When you just get into the practice of like being more honest and like having conversations. Yeah. And I wrote this on a sticky note and I did a social media post about it. And then other people wrote it on a sticky note and tagged me, which is very cute, but I wrote, where am I being inauthentic? Because I want to be liked. And I put that sticky note right in front of me on my desk. And it was really interesting to share this because some people were like, oh my gosh, I'm, I feel attacked. (laughs) And then some people were like, well, I don't really care about being liked, or it's not just about being liked. And so I want to talk a little bit about that because wanting to be liked is kind of an oversimplification. There's a few different reasons I've seen that people don't say what's true for them, right? They're not fully authentic or self-expressed with other people. One is being liked. Another is just general looking good. So maybe you don't care if people like you, but they want you to think you, you want them to think you're a certain way, whether that is impressive, strong, whatever. So if you're one of those people who's like, oh, well, I don't even care about being liked. Okay. I bet you care about something though. Like you probably even care about people thinking you don't care about being liked. <laughs> like, <laughs> sorry. So it could be anything like that. Another big one is, um, fear of rocking the boat of disharmony. So sometimes it's like, if things are otherwise going, okay, especially if as a kid, you didn't feel like there was space for you or your feelings or your opinions, that fear of rocking the boat can be really strong. So something's kind of nagging at you, but you don't want to disrupt the harmony that you have. So you don't bring it up because you don't want to deal with that. Um, so I think that's a big one too. And then the other one is just like fear of abandonment. So there's like fear that people won't like you or will think you're dumb or uncool or whatever. But then it's like, if I'm really honest, are people going to leave me or are people going to gang up on me? Am I going to say something to them? And they're like, how could you? And then they tell other people about it. And then in your mind, there's this scenario of everybody's turning on you unlikely, but these are some of the fears that a lot of people carry when it comes to being fully authentic and self-expressed and saying what they know to be true, even though it's scary. 
Yeah, absolutely. I, I see this play out with business owners in boundary setting, you know, wanting to just say yes. Like, so the oftentimes the authentic answer to a question is like, no, I can't do that. Or I'll get that to you in two weeks. I cannot get that to you right now. But they're just like, yes, yes, I can do that. Absolutely. Because they want to like be liked and they want to be the the people pleaser and they want the person to, yeah, to like them. They don't want to potential, I don't know, whatever the fear is. Um, but then that, that causes so much basically drowning in work and, um, the inauthenticity that then leads to the exhaustion. So just recognize when you're just saying yes, 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 I can do it. Like why? And what are you afraid would happen if you maybe said no, or you maybe said I can, but not until this date. (laughs) Yeah. And I think looking at how you receive boundaries is helpful too, because if you ask someone to do something and they say, no, is that upsetting to you? Cause if it is, you probably don't want to do that to somebody else. So I think we can be honest with our boundaries and also do the work when we get a boundary, even though maybe it feels really uncomfortable to work on that internally, instead of blaming the person who gave the boundary, because I would expand on that and even say, the answer is probably not usually, no, I can't it's no, I don't want to, (laughs) I could, (laughs) but I don't want to, I don't want to prioritize this because I'm prioritizing these other things. So how can we be respectful, but authentic to other people? And also how can we create a safe space where we respect other people's boundaries so that they can be authentic with us? Yeah, absolutely. This is the stuff that Marky's really good at helping people with because she helps me with it every day. So as business owners and as coaches, we really love, you know, getting deep with entrepreneurs on this stuff that's holding people back because growing your business is so like, there's so many strategies and tactics that you need to employ, which is obviously we talk a lot about like sales and marketing strategies, but when it comes down to it, the things that have held us back the most that we've you know, that when we overcome, we see a big leap. It's this stuff. It's the inauthenticities. It's the, you know, either not being able to set boundaries or not being triggered when you get boundaries given to you. So if this stuff is resonating and you want to go deeper and learn about coaching with us, send an email to support at interviewconnections.com and we can have a conversation. Let us know what came up for you when you heard about all this. 